Okay, welcome to the continuation of the tutorial on summarization of data and sampling distribution. We've been able to cover summarization of data and where we treated the measures of central tendencies as well as measures of dispersion. So this time we're going into sampling distribution. We're going into sampling distribution, yeah. Um, we all, we all we already have at least the visual knowledge on population statistics and the likes. So we are just going, we're going to build on that this time around. Now we all know population population is just the total number of individuals so elements that fall into the area of study the total number all of them that's population now if you are you know you cannot cover if you are carrying out statistics you cannot cover all the population it's just like you know, let's take for example you're trying to carry out a research on maize farmers in Abel you can you can meet all of them but then you can meet a selected number those ones are the samples so if you are meeting few from the population then you're working with samples and that is what statistics is, is all about yeah that's a part, part of statistics inferential statistics you are picking out samples from the population in order to judge for the whole population you are judging based on the samples but on behalf of the whole population okay having that in mind having that in mind we then go into sampling distribution we all know samples are representatives of the population population is just the total number of elements or individuals that fall into the area of study and um, statistics itself is working with samples working with samples that are sample statistics you're working with samples in order to judge for the population and when you are working with the whole population that is no more statistics you call that parameter you call it parameter okay that is not actually where we are going to that's just by the way now let's go into the topic let's go into the topic proper now just like i said when you're working with samples you can when you're working with uh, a population you can get samples from the population and then judge for the whole population now there's the relationships between your samples and your population and that relationship is what we want to deal with here under sampling distribution that relationship is what we want to deal with under sampling distribution now let's take a population of let's take a population of one two three and um, we are sampling we are sampling two individuals from the population with replacement with replacement so that means I can pick one one I can pick one two I can pick one three I can also pick 2 1, 2 2, 2 3. I can pick 3 1, 3 2, 3 3. Okay, so this is the population. This is the population and um, the samples. I sampled two, two, two individuals from the population. No. And I sampled them with replacement. We want to try to see the relationship between the the test statistics for the population and the samples. Okay, now for the population, population parameter. Now, 
let's try to find the mean the mean for the population remember mean for the population the symbol is mu and remember the mean is you simply remember since you don't have much of them it's just one two three we can easily use this from major measure of central tendency that's divided by three and that is what six divided by three and two so we know that mean for the population is two good let's go to that of the samples let's go to that of the samples now for the samples we have uh, let me draw a line here okay now we need to get the midpoint for each of them i hope we still remember we need to get the midpoint for each of them and that's one plus one plus two divided by two one this is three divided by two one point five okay this is four divided by two two this is three divided by two one point five this is four divided by two two this is two point five this is two this is two point five and this is three okay we already have that now let's also find let's also find the mean for the samples so the mean of the samples is written as this we can we can do it this way you had since they are not they are not all so much you can add everything up 1 plus 1.5 plus 2 plus 1.5 Plus 1.5 plus 2 plus 2.5 plus 2 plus 2.5 plus 3. I guess we've covered 1, 1.5, 2, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 2. Okay, all divided by count them, that's 9 of them. Okay, so we already have that. Now, if you had everything up, you should get 18 divided by 9, and that is what 2. So we can then see that just like I mentioned, we're trying to get the relationships. Now, we can see that the mean for the population is what 2, and the mean of the sample is what 2. Then we can then deduce, we can then say that the mean of the sample of the population is the same as the mean of the sample if the samples are chosen randomly with replacements you they are sampled correctly with replacement then the mean of the population Should be the same as the mean of the samples as this one is for when the sample do it replacement so you can see this as you can see it as theorem <laughs> you can see it as theorem not a theorem actually but you can just see it as theorem okay so we already have that that means mean of the samples same as mean of population when sampled with replacement now what if they are sampled without replacement what if they are, what if the samples were chosen randomly but without replacement okay now without replacement Without replacement, 
okay uh, remember the population is one two three now the samples chosen from the population now we are sampling this time around without replacement that means one and two one and three then two and three yeah I can't pick one and one I can't pick two and one since I already have one and two I can't pick so this is everything we can pick now we already know that the mean of the population we already know that the mean of the population which is mu equals to one plus two plus three all over two all over three which is two we already know that now what of that of the samples now the sample uh, that's firstly the midpoint this is 1 plus 2 3 divided by 2 1.5 plus 2 plus 2.5 all divided by 3 now let's add everything up 1.5 plus 2.5 that's 4 plus 2 6 6 divided by 3 and that is what 2 so we can see that it is still the same thing even for without replacement mean of the population is still the same as mean for the sample So you can see it as theorem 2. Okay. Now how how can we how can we apply this? Now that's the that's the main point. Where does this apply? Now you see questions like in a university of 6,000 students the mean age is the mean age of students the mean age of students is 20 years if if 50 students are sampled randomly with replacement what will be their mean age now, you have a question like this in a university of 6,000 students the mean age of students is 20 years if 50 students are sampled randomly with replacement what will be their mean H what will be their mean age? So now what this is trying to tell is that this is the population, six thousand students, and out of this six thousand, fifty of them were sampled probably for something, and out of this six thousand, their mean age is twenty. Now, if you sample fifty students randomly from this population with replacement, what would be their mean age? Simple. You remember that if we run if the sampling is done correctly and randomly with replacement the mean of the population should be the same as the mean of the sample so that means the mean of these 50 students should be what the mean age of the 50 students should also be what 
20 years is as simple as that straightforward it's as simple as that and it's straightforward so means the population mean should always be the same as the sample mean that is what the theorem is there that is what the theorem states with or without replacement the population mean should be the same as the sample mean okay now that takes us to variance and standard deviation i did the same for variance and standard deviation that will be treated in the next tutorial thank you for listening i remain alas in the faith